And today's episode, I'm really excited for you to listen to. So uh, there's a difference between AA and meeting Jesus through your challenge with alcohol. It's dramatically different. AA has, teaches you great tools as to how to fight this demon. But what AA does is they remove Jesus from the equation. AA teaches, though, the fundamental tools that Jesus talks about in the Bible, and then he lived out. And it kind of is a, is a guy, I look at things as tools, right? So in AA, you as a mechanic would get the hand tools. And those hand tools help you to change a tire or to work on an engine. But they're hand tools. Well, when you encounter Jesus and you have the Holy Spirit in your life, it's like taking a power pack to those hand tools. And they become powerful tools that work in an exceptional way. In today's episode, they're going to talk about encountering Jesus and having the Holy Spirit work with you and through you as you fight that demon of alcohol. So welcome to today's episode. Hello everyone, my name is Melody Chandler. I'm one of the hosts here at From Beer to the Bible and I am joined by our other host, <laughs> Irvin Lee. I want to have a conversation today with Irvin that is perhaps a little controversial. Um, I, I would love to talk with him about whether or not it is okay to talk about Jesus or say the word Jesus in open AA meetings. So I want to share a little bit about my journey and my experience with the steps. When I walked into the rooms of AA in 2015, it was desperation that brought me there. My higher power, if you want to call it, was the Lord, but I was certainly not a follower of him at that point. I was a believer. I was not living a righteous life. And when I came in, I was quickly told that we were to find a God of our own understanding. And so today, Irvin, I just want to have the conversation with you about whether or not at this point um, it is it is okay to mention the word Jesus in AA meetings and whether or not you've had any experience with that. Well, I have. And there was a couple of things when I went into the rooms of AA that stood out to me. One was I remember walking in again, scared in fear. Mm -hmm. And when I walked in, I noticed two things. I'm like, there are no other black people in here. And I noticed a lot of people, cause I had, I think I had a cross on and they were looking at me a little different. And I immediately, you know how it is with the old timers, you can't really speak when you're mm -hmm. new. So I'm, I'm just kind of sitting back observing, but I'm, I, I always struggle with the concept of me making up my own God. Because I, I grew up, I grew up, I'm gonna tell myself a small black Baptist church, and I, I knew the Lord God, knew Jesus Christ, I just didn't want him to be the Lord of my life. So I, I quickly learned that every time I would say, and it wasn't anything I was doing intentionally, it's just that I refer to God as the Lord. Sometimes I may say Jesus, uh, I may say Christ, I may say Christ Jesus, but I realized the stillness that would come over the room when I uttered Jesus. And so, um, I remember after saying, uh, Jesus, and the old timer said, can we talk to you? Wow. And they pulled me in the kitchen. And for those of you who don't know, you don't ever want to be called into the kitchen at an AA meeting <laughs> after the meeting. So they said to me, and these are the words, they said, you are making our agnostics and our atheists uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And I was confused. So I go home and I tell my wife and she says, Irvin, have you noticed that every time you go to that meeting, you come back more disturbed mm -hmm. than when you left? Mm -hmm. And I ended up recusing myself and I stopped going to mm -hmm. that meeting. Um, and, and then I'll let you comment, but I, I often think about this. I was less than a year sober. Wow. And I kept thinking, what if it was someone else who didn't know Jesus and that was their experience or they were young in their faith? Because by that time, the Lord had sent me two pastors who were discipling me. So I felt like I could make it right. without my group. But I'm thinking, what if a guy who didn't have a church, didn't have two pastors discipling him, 
what if that happened to him and he decided to go back out? Wow. And he died. Yeah. So that was part of my inspiration for starting our ministry. Wow. So how, how sober were you when that happened? How many months um, did you have? So I, I'm i going to say I had about four months. And I, I think you know me well enough to know if I got something to say, I'm going to say it. So I get in the room and sure. Jesus is doing all this stuff and removing the obsession. And I... I knew that, yes, did I have spiritual disciplines, did I have a sponsor? Yes, I had all those things. But honestly, I knew that it was the Christ in me, mm -hmm. living in and through me, and really living the life of sobriety and the life of, of righteousness for me. I knew right. that because you're looking at a guy who thought he could not stay sober and stop drinking for seven seconds. Yeah. That's not very long, yeah. seven seconds, right? So I just knew, so I'm, you, you know, you're on fire. I'm mm -hmm. on fire for Christ. I want everybody mm -hmm. to experience what I'm, I'm experiencing. And those uh, atheists and agnostics were like, no, 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 no. But they would get, I would have to sit and listen to some of them. I remember a guy having the doorknob as <clears throat> his God. Right. And I'm thinking, that only opens that door. Yeah. I need a Christ who can open all doors and close all doors. Wow. I'm sorry you had that experience. But, you know, look at what God turned that into, this yeah. ministry, right? Yeah. So he used that difficulty to bring about what you've done with this ministry and help so many people. And it's interesting because, you know, those old timers said that you were bothering the atheists and the agnostics. Yeah. What about the segment of the Christians who came into the rooms, who talked, heard from people who had the doorknob as their God, and all of a sudden they don't belong? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So there's a whole other segment who are Christians who profess Jesus but are struggling with alcoholism, yeah. who are turned off and turned away because this issue, right? Yeah. That they don't feel free to do what you did, which is literally just talk about your higher power. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it seems so it seems so hypocritical. <laughs> well, it it actually is. And I'm going to say we as Christians shoulder some of that blame. And this is why I say that. Because there were other Christians that were in the room when I was getting disinvited and I was getting those those stares and those looks, but they're quiet yeah. and they assimilate. Yeah. They're, it's almost like, yeah. are you ashamed of right. Jesus? The one who really is setting us free, yeah. they were quiet. Yeah. I would see some of them at church and I'm going, you you allow them yeah. to, to, to attack me. And the 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 asinine thing about what happened to me was our group was at a church wow so i'm telling the old timers so i can't say <clears throat> jesus at a church because i'm offending those that don't believe in him and we often forget it's one of my favorite scriptures it, it is very convicting and i really pray it and repeat it to myself every day it it's joshua 1 9 and it says have i not commanded you to be strong and to be courageous do not be afraid do not be discouraged for the lord your god our god my god jesus goes with us wherever we go yeah. into the rooms of aa yeah. but we as christians even just in society we are so not bold and so not courageous yeah. right and i had an old timer and he knew me from uh corporate america and he says oh you need to calm down you need to stop beating people over the head with this jesus thing and he says to me, i'm christian and i'm going i can't tell i actually can't tell and i saw him recently at a ministry he and I both do some work with. And I, and I really don't care if he hears and knows this. And he said to me again, oh, man, yeah, I see what you're doing. But, man, you need to really calm down on beating people over the head with Jesus. I said, no, no. And if someone wants to make up a higher power, and 
you work with them. Mm -hmm. It's not that we're going to turn anybody away. I'm not saying believe as I believe, but I will not hide the fact that I know that I'm sober because of Christ Jesus. Right. And we shouldn't have to. We shouldn't have to. If yeah. the, the train of thinking, if the line of thinking is we accept all, yeah. then why would they accept all except us talking about yeah. that in yeah. a meeting? You know, yeah. And I don't think that, I think that the meetings that I go to, I, I don't, I'm sorry you had that experience with those guys, but I, I, I was in a meeting recently and somebody, we were talking about unity. We were mm -hmm. talking about the idea of, you know, a newcomer coming in and feeling accepted and not mm -hmm. feeling um, ostracized or being able to um, kind of just look at this as we're just going to help you get sober. We're not trying to, you know, save you. That's yeah. kind of the whole mentality of it. And she went on to say that, you know, I, that's why you won't hear me talking about the Bible in meetings. And that's why you won't hear me say the word Jesus. And yeah. um, it's for that fact. And I thought to myself, well, the reality is if that is who our Savior is mm -hmm. and we are talking about God in this room, mm -hmm. I am not going to shrink back and not say that. That's just not I, yeah. I'm not I'm not going to do that. That flies in the face of what I'm taught to do yeah. and what I'm willing to do. And I'm not yeah. going to stand, stand, you know, I'm not going to wither on that. Um, I understand her, her idea, but I disagree that that then forbids me to mm -hmm. say it because in the rooms, you'll also hear about the Course in Miracles and you're all about <laughs> Eckhart Tolle and you'll hear yeah. about, you know, all of those things. Yeah. So absolutely. Let's keep it, let's keep it real and across the board. And, and if that is, my higher power, then yeah. I will speak about it and not in a way of bashing somebody over the head either. Yeah. It's literally my experience and yeah. I'm sharing my experience, strength and hope, which is what we're supposed to do in the rooms. Yeah. And, um, just keeping it to that, I think is uh, she shared that. And then the next person that got called on, it was so beautiful. They said, well, all I know is I share my experience and my higher power is Jesus and I will yeah. say his name. And yeah. if anyone has a problem with that, there's a step for that, yeah. you know? <laughs> which I appreciated because that is the, that is the, <sighs> the honest situation, you know? Yeah. Um, and I don't think there's anything wrong with, with doing that, sharing yeah. our experience yeah. in the rooms. Uh, you know, oftentimes the truth of Christ Jesus convicts. It convicts mm -hmm. and the enemy loves to take something that was birthed out of Christ if you go back to the founders mm -hmm. you take some of those steps you can all tie biblical principles to them right oh my gosh yes and, and so a beautiful Christ-centered movement has been perverted and hijacked yeah. by a group of people who do not want to hear nor believe in the true freedom, the true truth, the way um, that is found only in Jesus, right? And I get the fact, look, I work with guys, and I remember two guys I'm going to talk about. Uh, and I show up, and man, they're just like nothing I've ever seen before. I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, I didn't know if they were men. I didn't know if they were women. And I remember... I, I sat there and I said, Lord, you know, I have a problem with this. Mm -hmm. um, what do I do? And the Lord said to me, I want you to love on them. Mm -hmm. I want you to love on them. Mm -hmm. So I go back and I sit down and they said, we heard about you. And we know that you love the Lord, but we don't want to hear nothing about no Jesus. That's exactly, I'm quoting wow. them, right? Nothing about mm -hmm. no Jesus. I said, okay, let's just have coffee. And let's talk about getting you sober. Mm -hmm. So I am capable of sitting with people who don't even want to hear anything about the Lord. I can respect that. Yeah. But let's get you sober. But I trust that if you belong to the Lord, at some point along our journey, he's going to open a door mm -hmm. for me to, to yes. talk about him. Yeah. And fast forward, I had been meeting with this, this group, these two people for maybe about a year mm -hmm. and we were getting up and they said well sit back down we want to talk to you about something i said yeah they said could you talk to us about the will of god and i reminded them i said whoa 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 you yeah. said don't ever bring the jesus stuff they said well we want to know about the will of god 
So he, he was faithful to open the door. Then I talked about it. And, and it's this concept of, I don't understand it. Maybe you can define it for me of beating people over the head with Jesus. They say that a lot in those rooms. You want to beat people over the head with Jesus, but you want to beat me over the head with this make-believe, these make-believe guys that y'all throw out mm -hmm. that I sit there. It's called patience. I tolerate it, and I'm going, this is so. As I'm sitting there, I'm like, Lord, help me here, yeah. right? So So I struggled when I was, when I was, I had moved, and I was coming, I when I moved, COVID shut everything down. So I yeah. didn't have community. I didn't, I really dove into the word for the first time. And I yeah. started to grow in my relationship with the Lord yeah. even more. So I was like four years sober at the time, but I wasn't able to go to meetings. They weren't yeah. having them. And I just kind of, I think God just wanted me alone for a little bit. And, yeah. you know, I started to see these things and really think about them and wonder if I belonged going to meetings. Cause I yeah. thought, you know, the things that you just brought up and yeah. um, I had kind of gotten in with, um, a uh, couple meetings that were more along the mindset of what the, you experienced with those old timers, right? Mm -hmm. Where they were very dogmatic about not talking about the Lord. And, and then when I moved back to this area and I started going back to meetings, it was like, God was like, Melody, how would you miss out on the opportunity to have a room full of people who are desperate, like in their most desperate yeah. moments, right? And, and the last days of drinking are miserable. And then they're coming in and they're being told, you have to find God. You have to find a relationship with God. Yeah. You have been given this gift of sobriety and you know me. And why would you not want to put yourself right in the smack middle of that yeah. room? You know, yeah. and I was convicted like, OK, I got gotcha. you. So I go back in and I am not beating anyone over the head with anything. Yeah. What I'm hoping to be is a light that people are drawn to, that women that are new are drawn to. Yeah. And then when they ask more questions and they want to know, I am absolutely going to tell them what I do. I'm yeah. going to absolutely tell them that scripture and the Lord transformed my life and that that's going to be incorporated with how mm -hmm. I sponsor. Um, and because I can't I can't just because I disagree with a lot of what is said, mm -hmm. remove myself because then God misses, I miss opportunities to be yeah. of service yeah. with God, you know? So that was kind of where I landed. Um, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for the meeting that I attend is, is much more open to hearing, yeah. um, about faith. There's a lot of Christians that attend, but I think there is a segment of the population that are Christians who are struggling with addiction, yeah. who are not willing to walk into their rooms and work the steps that could potentially benefit from that. Yeah. Well, it, it's so many, as I think about AA, 12-step recovery, being Christian, atheists, agnostics, all of these things, it gets really messy. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I say to the church, and I'm going to say it now, God has entrusted you with whether it's one soul or 100,000 souls. You have to heal the person's whole body. You've got 10 to 20% of your congregation suffering from addiction. We should have our own. Mm -hmm. What I told our church was, hey, we need our own groups yeah. so that we could talk about the God of our understanding, which is Christ Jesus. Yeah. So that's one thing. And then... Yes, we should be in those rooms because there are going to be people who are going to make up their own God right. and it's still going to leave a hole in your heart. Absolutely. Right. And you're going to they're going to be looking like, hey, Mel, I heard I saw you on TikTok. I saw you. So yeah. can you tell me about this Jesus? Right. So he'll open that door. But I, I really want us to know as Christians that we have to establish our own as well. There's nothing wrong with integrating into going to meetings. Yeah. Uh, I recommend it. Yeah. I recommend the 12 steps. But what I've watched Christians and non-Christians alike do with that big book and with 12-step recovery and those groups is commit idolatry. Yeah. Like I got guys saying, oh, the book is the steps. Right. Man, stop it. Yeah. It is the steps, I worked them. A couple of times. And yes, it's a great, I recommend every, I think everybody in the world should work Absolutely. the steps, right? Yeah. But let's not get lost on the fact that when you give your life to Christ, he takes up residence. Right. 
and starts to work in and through Absolutely. you, right? Absolutely. So, so I heard a guy say, and man, I was, I was somewhere, and it took everything in me. He said, uh, the guy said, okay, you reading your big book to this guy he's sponsoring? And he says, yes. And he says, yeah, but I read the Bible. He said, but the Bible didn't get you sober. Well, I want to address that. The Bible got me sober. It's nothing wrong with the Bible. What is wrong with, we read it and we don't apply it. And we don't allow, which is surrender and let Christ Jesus work in and through us and live the life for us. I was so mad. I've been sorry, like, I don't want to pick up a resentment, but I was so mad. It's like the Bible didn't work. This dude is a professing Christian and telling a kid that the Bible didn't work. No, the Bi everything in that Bible is true. Those promises are true. It's just that we don't apply them, right? I knew the Lord, you knew the Lord, but I was the Lord of my life. Mm -hmm. I just wasn't up applying the wisdom, the knowledge that I had here and here. I was not applying that to the way I live my life one moment and one day at a time. Yeah, and I, I that's, that's fantastic. And I, I've heard the same similar sentiments, right? Yeah, yeah. And especially from people who were raised in the church or their parents were pastors or yeah, whatever, you yeah. know, that, that sentiment of the Bible couldn't get, get me sober. It was, what's interesting to me is literally every principle in the big book is basically the Bible just recorded. It's a hundred percent. So the Bible actually does if you were to just, but maybe some of us are slower learners. So I needed the tangible, yeah. literally the tangible we're going to walk through every single one of these steps is an ego crushing proposition. And yeah. I had so much ego and so much pride to, yeah. that I needed it. I needed yeah. a fat dose of humility yeah. every single step of the way. Yeah. But all that that did, God used that to draw me closer to him, you yeah. know, and I needed it mapped out for me in the 12 steps. But yeah. it's it's funny to me because, you know, you'll read something and, it, and it's interesting to me too, how there's such an aversion from people who are not saved about us saying Jesus, but every Lord's <laughs> prayer we read we say yeah, at the end of a meeting is literally Jesus's words from the Sermon on the Mount I mean yeah. it's it's so intertwined and it's just I mean it's you know it's messy yeah. and it's a contradiction yeah. and the this blows my mind so okay I'm talking about Jesus and I'm in these meetings and over I'm gonna call it the last five years I think I've been to, let's call it, about an average of a meeting a year. I'll take a guy, right, who needs to go. I will. Um, but funny thing about the people who go to AA, if they get sick, they're struggling, they're suffering, they run into trials and tribulations. And if I call them or they text or call me and I say, hey, can I pray for you? They always say yes. And I'm saying Jesus, I'm saying God, right? And through all of this that we're talking about, the messiness of the message of Christ that we have integrated and pulled out of AA, is God is always drawing us to him, mm -hmm. right? He's always using our circumstances, um, testing and we don't talk much about this uh in, in church it, god tests our hearts he tests our faith mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he puts us in situations like you mm -hmm. right it, it's interesting we met each other when i say we were running what i call parallel path in a lot a lot of ways right where you were isolated i was isolated and i'm i'm going God, I know you're doing a work, but this work sucks. Mm -hmm. You got me in the fire. Actually, I'm quite tired of mm -hmm. being in the fire. Yeah. Can you just take me out, right? <laughs> I can I'm, totally I'm relate going, to that sentiment. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're just like, how much more yeah. molding and burning okay. off do you have to do? And okay. I would ask, can you take me out? How long is this going to last? And, and man, all those answers kept saying it was basically wait on the Lord, you know, uh, Psalm 46, 10, be still. And it was all these things. And it's, it's, we both, what I noticed about us both as we were going through that season of life is we just got busy working and serving, mm -hmm. right? Just, just out when you're going through something and you're waiting on the Lord, be still in your soul, 
but be active everywhere else. Go do something. Yeah. Go serve somebody. Go yeah. help somebody. Go. And I think on it for me is like eight years and six months of just, man, um, that's about how long I've been sober. And I, I just, man, I think about, you know, the things I lost, the people I lost, uh, my family, my wife, all this collateral damage, right? And the most disappointing thing to me was when I got sober, it didn't, after 31 days, fix everything. Right. <laughs> right. It didn't fix it. I wanted my wife, I wanted her to say, oh, my, my husband's sober. I forgive you. And we pick up where we were before yeah. I did all that foolishness, right? right? It doesn't work like that, guys. Uh, you know, I think eight years, six months later, uh, nine years of what I will call honoring my, my marriage covenant to my wife. Um, it just took time, right? Just and it, and it still takes time. And that's why the meetings are so important because we change people, places, and things. We can't hang out with our drinking friends and buddies. Uh, so we need community. Yeah. And I first found it there. And all the challenges I did have with my group, they do give you a list. And I could call those mm -hmm. men. And some of those men I'm still friends with now. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't agree with their God. I don't agree with this. I don't agree with those things. But if I have a guy that I need help with, they're there. Right. Um, and they did love me. They just wanted me to lay off to Jesus. But, you know, I get that now on you and I. We're, we're all on LinkedIn. And people, da, 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 why are you always talking about Jesus? And then I hit them back and say, uh, I am in the ministry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I sold boats, I still talk about Jesus. Right. But, but hey, you shouldn't have that on the platform. But I love him. Yeah. And I'm not sober without him. Yeah. Yes, meetings help. Yes, the big book helped. Yes, the biggest of the big books, the Bible, helped. So um, I would say this uh, around should Christians go to meetings? Yes. Because it is a step in the process, mm -hmm. oftentimes, of God getting us sober. I would also say this. Be bold, be courageous, don't shrink back. Because those old timers, you know, this, they're, they're intimidating, right? Oh, for sure. When you're <laughs> brand new and they got 30 years sobriety and you're like looking up to them like, how did you do how that? How did you do that? Yeah. I'm going, what? 30? Yeah. And I'm sitting there going, and I'm doing my age, I'm not going to tell, but I'm going, I'd have to live to get 40 years old. <laughs> Uh, we'll be gone. I'll be yeah, gone by then, probably. Yeah, I'm sitting yeah. there going. So, but they are very intimidating. And they tell they you, sit be. down yeah. and shut up. Yes. Well, if anyone knows me, like we talked about, I, I, hey, look, man, when, you, when, when Jesus does what he did for you and I, how can you be quiet? That's right. That's right? exactly right. How, how can you be quiet? Yeah. And if anyone wants to know what happens to you when you drink and drug, there's Proverbs 23. Go and read that. It tells you you're going to see things. You, you're going to hallucinate. You, For me, the physical stuff that I went through, losing, the getting down to like about 150 pounds, I probably weigh like 195 now. Mm -hmm. Um, getting down, not being able to keep alcohol down, the, the constant throwing up to my esophagus is so sore, mm -hmm. um, the liver, all the issues. I'm going to put that over here. The worst was the spiritual stuff. Yeah. The stuff I saw that the Bible tells you you're going to see in Proverbs 23. Um, I was like, I'm still trying to unsee some of that stuff. Wow. So any of you want to go down a path of drinking and drugging, I am telling you, <laughs> you do not want to see some of the things that I saw mm -hmm. uh, in the spiritual aspect of it. Uh, we don't talk a lot about it, but, man, some of that stuff was frightening, mm -hmm. right? And uh, I'm going to say this. You go into the rooms, and I've had people say this to me as well. They say, because you... 
in the AA meeting, sometimes it can go to where we're people talk about what they used to do, right? Uh, you know, and and it can be triggering to people, especially new people, right? When you we call them your war stories, or oh, I used to do, da, da, da. and if you don't watch it, it can it can slide into to making a person think uh, think things. Um, but I, I would I would tell anybody. And I drank for a long time, and I had a lot of so-called fun. I would give all that back. I would give all that back. It was not enough fun. When mm -hmm. you notice, when you yeah, by the time you enter those rooms, that that little the oh, party, the fun the, is long gone. The fun, the fun, <laughs> that yeah. five minutes. It, it feels like five minutes of fun when you put it in a box. You're like, and now I got this. <laughs> now I got this. So. Uh, but the gift of all of that pain. Oh, yeah. Now we get oh, this, yeah. you we, know, yeah, and, yeah. and I can look back and see, and, and it never fails whenever I have a new sponsee. Inevitably, they have gone through exactly what I've gone through, yeah. you know, and, yeah. and I'm able to speak from that place of experience in, yeah. in a way that, you know, when somebody can't relate, it's a little more difficult to yeah. cultivate that trust. Yeah. Uh, and I'll, I will say this about uh, the 12 step meetings is they are very well organized run uh, but it's 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 like the church right you, you got to watch the power dynamic of the the old timers versus the the young folks um you got to watch pride and uh idolatry moving into the groups right because you you've got you you've got unequally yoked folks right the bible says don't be that because you've got us in there who are this light and when you are filled with the spirit and there are other spirits present that makes them very uncomfortable oh i know i've irritated many spirits yeah <laughs> you yeah, can yeah. feel the irritation <laughs> but but that's okay you know yeah. it's it's okay and i think too just like in say that again for the folks in the back that it's okay <laughs> It's it okay, but but a lot of times we feel like as Christians, I hear them say that I walked in there and I walked out. Don't walk out. No, it's okay. I think that, you know, I think it's like just like determining where you're going to end up at church. I think determining where you're going to end up in meetings is yeah. also critical. And yeah. so, like, I can't even tell you the last time I heard a war story at where mm -hmm. I go. You know, yeah. it's it's not there. But you're right. There are a lot of sick meetings yeah, <laughs> in, the, in the country where that's what they do. They sit around and talk about war stories and it's just, there's no solution. There's no, you know, yeah. and, and that kind of thing I would definitely stay away from. But, um, but yeah, there's certainly, there's at the end of the day, it's spiritual warfare, right? It's, at the it end is, of the day, it it's, it's not about that person that took offense. Yeah, It's about what's behind them that took offense. And that so is, good. um, so I think just keeping that perspective of it's it's not about that person that's really yeah. seeming to frustrate me right now. Okay, I, I got to talk about two things. Uh, you just thank you, Holy Spirit. So being a woman and walking into those rooms, what does that feel like? Honestly, you know, when I first got sober, I went to the 7 a.m. meeting and right. it was primarily men. And okay. I, there are not a lot of women. They were all on their way to work, but I would, I would, I wake up early anyway. So I would go, I felt like they were my brothers. Okay. I didn't feel any kind of weird way. Um, now there are certainly men in the program that have gotten their alcohol under control, but there's other aspects of their life and they're yeah. creepers. And yeah. I've experienced that too. And I just okay. avoid those people. But, um, the, the guys that were at the meeting, it, I was at a very solution oriented, God focused meeting and yeah. in, in the beginning. And it was, um, it was very comforting. The women in the rooms are what helped me tremendously. Yeah. And oh, yeah. there would, you know, I would go to a different meeting, um, just to meet more women, but, um, it wasn't anything where I felt I was at the point of so desperate and thirsty for help and sobriety and solution that mm -hmm. it didn't bother me that I was the only female okay. in there. Okay. And, and I made the comment earlier, and let me clarify this, about being the only black dude in my 12-step um, recovery AA group. Well, one is the, the geography. That's mm -hmm. one thing. But what's disappointing is for a long time, I really didn't see a lot of other black people in the rooms. Mm -hmm. And that's disappointing. 
And a part of that is, I think I've told you this before, in our culture, we want to pray everything away. Mm -hmm. I had family members when I announced that I was going to treat, oh, no, you can't do that. You got, you got to pray. You need yeah. more faith. Hey, I prayed. I had faith. Yeah. My process is I'm about to check into this place for 31 days and uh, pray that I discover my relationship, reignite yeah. my relationship with the Lord. So I want to I want to talk to all people of color, counseling, treatment, rehab, how, whatever you want to call it. The Lord supports that. He wants you happy, mm -hmm. healthy, and whole. No matter what your, your, your culture says, what the people who look like you say, if you are struggling from drug and alcohol addiction, mental health, depression, whatever it is, go to treatment for it. You will be better for it because the Lord will show up and bless you for taking uh, a step of faith. So I would say that. And then the other thing is I don't want anyone to think that we are disparaging um, AA or 12-step recovery because it does get a lot of people sober. But I was after something greater than just being a sober dude. Um, I had someone say to me, if you could get sober, if God can change you and transform you, he can change and transform anyone and i was actually hurt by that comment so i'm like person who told me that i said uh, she's exaggerating i couldn't have been that bad so i take it before the lord and i lay it out i said was i that bad and he this is one word response and it hurt he said monster monster so i was a monster and god don't lie god don't change yeah. i didn't like that and I said, wow, wow. Don't ask the Lord things you don't want the answer to. <laughs> I did not want that answer. But I'll never forget that answer. But I, I tell that story because there are other men who are monsters out there. And if he could take this monster and change this monster and make him a man, a guy who loves the Lord, who, uh, and he's kept me sober. He has kept me sober. And my life is so very different than it ever was mm -hmm. and there are times um when you feel like i know i do sometimes i go man this thing is is very different than what my life used to be my life is is very calm is very simple um doesn't have a whole lot of people in it um and i had to get comfortable with that right is is certain things that in places that I, I just I just choose not to go because uh, if you've ever been the sober person at a drunk party, that is just not cool. It's miserable. <laughs> it's boring. I don't want to talk to people who are. I'm talking to alcohol, not the person at that oh, point. Man, you know. Man. But give but, me calm and simple every day of the week. <laughs> but Mel, here's the thing, and I got convicted first time it ever happened to me, and I'm sitting there. With my, with my crew, like I have a, a crew of guys that accept the fact that I can't drink. These are like my boys, yeah. boys, love y'all. And they stuck with me but as I was going through all that stuff. But I come around and they're drinking and doing their thing. And I'm thinking, is this how I was? And then the conversation I can't relate to, yeah. right? And, and when you are so close to God, your character, your conversation, and your conduct starts to just change. Yeah. And your appetite for certain things, it's like, uh, that used to be funny. Yeah. Uh, it's not now. Yeah. He completely changes your desire, your taste, <laughs> your everything. I mean, he does. He comes in and uh. changes everything, you know. And I was, I was listening to something the other day, and they were talking about that scripture that talks about he gives you the desires of your heart, right? Yeah. And that doesn't mean, you know, the car that I'm no. looking at. Yeah. But what he does, if the closer I get to the Lord, the more he changes my desires. And then my desires are in line with what his will is for me yeah. and gives me the desires of my heart, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that was um, kind of profound. But yeah, he totally changes what I'm interested in and what is appealing and what is fun now, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, the most amazing thing that his presence has done for me 
is stop the racing of my mind. Mm-hmm. You know, yes. that, that's what, that's the first time I had a drink, yeah. all that quiet, yes. right? That I piece. felt like, yeah. what just happened here? That, this piece is amazing. Yeah. It works till it doesn't work anymore. Right. And now it's like my mind doesn't race, right? Yeah. And the other thing is, and he's still working on this, is that the, the book says we have 100 forms of fear. Mm-hmm. And that's so very true, mm-hmm. right? And that it takes time to work all that out. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. Um, AA uh, and 12-step meetings, uh, I commend them. There are a lot of people that they have really gotten sober, right? I love, love, love working the steps. I love cleaning out my closet. Uh, lo- love is a strong word. Uh, <laughs> I respect the yes. process of cleaning out my closet. Uh, it makes us deal with stuff. Um, and I, w- I, I, would, I would always take a man to an AA meeting, the right AA meeting. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say, as we start to wrap up here with about five to seven minutes left, what would you tell someone to look for when choosing a a group to attend? So I was taught early on that solid meetings include people who are coming with their book. So yeah. the the big book, which again is <laughs> just scripture wrapped all the way through it yeah. without actually quoting the Bible. That is the principles are derived directly from the Bible. Um, mm-hmm. So people have their books, people know their books, people that's solution oriented. So we're yeah. talking about steps and how they're applicable. It's not a, tell me where you are today. It's yeah. not, it's not that, mm-hmm. um, but it's, it's solution oriented. It's God focused, you mm-hmm. know, probably 90% of the meetings I go to at 7 a.m. cause I still go to the 7 a.m. meeting quite often we talk about God for an hour, you know, and I love that. I leave energized. I get to sit there and talk about what the Lord's doing. And, um, so finding one that's, you know, book based, solution oriented, steps based that has sponsorship opportunity, Mm -hmm. you know, to where they recognize newcomers. There's going to be a group of people afterwards that go up to the newcomer and give them phone numbers. Um, They've got literature there that people can purchase. Um, just all of those those things, I think, make a solid meeting. And yeah. it's it's you know you have to try out a few to yeah. to find the one. Um, but there's there's a lot of I mean here in DFW we've got like two thousand meetings a week yeah. that are ongoing, and yeah. so there are a lot of a lot of good ones. Um, but yeah, the, the the steps are like you said. I think everybody in this world could work the steps. Man. That inventory, that Speak confession of it. sins, it's literally yeah. like what we are told to do in the Bible, in right? The Bible. It's yeah. how we are to live. But it's a broken down, tangible way for this girl that helped me tremendously yeah. removing those blocks in a very methodical way. Um, and for the first time I was teachable, I was willing to listen. Yeah. And that had been the missing one of the missing components, that and the, yeah, the willingness. Yeah. And the great thing about the AA meetings, the most powerful thing for me was when I heard a man tell my story. Mm -hmm. I was like, wait, that's my story. Wait, you did that? I I relate to that. So I I love that about it. I love the fact that we're real and authentic about what we're going through mm-hmm. and what we feel. Yeah. I walk I walk through church and I ask a man, oh, hey, oh, I'm good, I'm blessed and highly favored. Yes, but I'm also maybe not feeling great today. Yeah. Right. I'm also maybe feeling like eh, I don't know how I feel about this sober thing today. Yeah. Right. I could use a word of encouragement. So. I love the fact that we develop spiritual disciplines in AA meetings. Um, so make sure they talk about and work the steps mm-hmm. would be one of my recommendations. Look around, right? Look around, go your first time, see if there's real true community, mm-hmm. right? Is there real true community? And then look and see and wait for a while to see if someone tells your story, mm-hmm. right? And if you are a believer, I I truly believe, hey, if you want a Christ-centered, and that is the God of your understanding, look for that. There are options out there. Mm -hmm. 
but don't be intimidated by going to one where they don't believe as you believe because you made such a, a, a profound point earlier is that God may have you in that room with those different spirits, with some darkness to be that light, to bring those uh, who are now sober to freedom right. that is only available through Christ Jesus. Uh, I'm going to leave with this, um, <laughs> and I make people mad with it all the time. The drinking and the alcoholism was not the root cause of why I fell into addiction. Mm -hmm. I have a sin nature mm -hmm. that loves to sin. My favorite sin was drinking mm -hmm. and womanizing and carousing and partying. Mm -hmm. That sin nature can only it, it, the bible talks about this fleshly suit that we have on it says it never did obey god it never did and until christ became my lord and my savior and took it took up residence in my body my mind my body my soul and started to live the life for me i could not be sober i could not be sober so if you're looking for a god the God of our understanding is Jesus Christ who died on Calvary so that you could be, so that we could be, so that the world could be set free. I'll let you close this out. Amen. I love that. Um, I agree. I think that, you know, Romans 7 talks about how I do what I don't want to do. <laughs> and that's the, that is the, the issue. That's the issue. And our sin happened to be what we found that piece in the bottle that yeah. we, that promised that piece. Yeah, and then it, it turned on us. Yeah. And it is this new way of living with Christ at the helm and with me following his direction gives me that peace that I was looking for through yeah. that alcohol. And, um, my relationship with him is the most important, precious thing in my entire life. And I discovered all of that through the alcoholism. So for that, I am so grateful. And I'm glad to have been with you today. Oh, thank you.